Hey, thanks for stopping by my channel. In this video, we're gonna talk about how to scan specific targets in bug bounty programs, as well as fuzzing our targets without getting ourselves into any trouble. I know there's a lot of interest in learning how to scan and fuzz bug bounty targets because sometimes you'll be reading through a program's rules and it'll specifically say that there is no scanning allowed. Now, there's a couple of ways to get around this, and if you watch my Shodan video, you can actually use Shodan to scan your bug bounty targets, and then you don't have to worry about anything because you're using Shodan, and that is one way to get around scanning a target and staying in the clear. Now, you can use InMap and fuzzing tools to do this as well, and that's the purpose of this video. So we're gonna go ahead and look at this, and I'm gonna show you how to do this without getting yourself into any hot water and to be able to scan these targets without any issue. Before we get going too far, I wanna explain to you why you're not allowed to scan these specific targets and there's really two main reasons one the company doesn't want a bunch of bug bounty hunters using a fuff which is going to send several hundred requests per second to their server and have them get dosed and sometimes if you do this you will actually get rate limited or even have your ip banned which is why i always recommend using a vpn but there is a way to go around this and i'm going to show you that at the end of this video and the second reason a lot of programs are going to tell you they don't want you scanning their network is people will use vulnerability scanners and this is just really a big no-no don't use vulnerability scanners. Recently, a program went live and then they were getting scanned so much with vulnerability scanners that they actually removed themselves from the bug bounty program. So don't use vulnerability scanners. These are the two big reasons why a lot of programs will say no scanning. And so just be aware of that. If you're going to fuzz for directories, make sure to slow down the amount of requests, which I'm gonna show you how to do, and don't use vulnerability scanners. Now, first, I wanna show you how to use InMap without getting yourself into any trouble. I've, so I've gone ahead and opened up Tenant from Hack the box here. If you follow my channel at all, you will know this is my go-to box for web app education. And the first thing we are going to do is run an in-map scan. So we have opened up our terminal here and you're probably familiar by now with an in-map scan. Now this is the typical in-map scan that I like to run. I'm going to change the IP right here. So if you would like to jot this down, this is how I run an in-map scan if I'm doing a capture the flag but we are not doing a capture the flag. We're gonna be scanning a bug bounty program and, and it's gonna look a little bit different. So we still want this dash A, we will want a dash capital F, and this is only gonna scan the top 100 ports. The reason I'm telling you to use the dash F is because if you're new, you're probably not gonna know which ports you want to look at. So I have a list of ports that I use when I run an in-map scan because you don't wanna scan all 65,535 ports. I think that's how many there are. You want to scan just a specific number of ports. A lot of networks are not gonna want you going out and scanning their entire network but it's okay to go out and scan the top 100 ports. They're probably not even going to notice and I'll show you how to make it so that they're not gonna notice and you're not gonna cause any kind of intrusion and they're not gonna care. So we wanna run the dash F for our ports and then you're gonna to wanna to run a dash T and then a one or a two. This is gonna really slow down your network scan. I think that InMap runs on a T3 automatically and if I'm in a hurry and I just want some ports to shoot at, if I'm in a CTF, I'll run a T5. That's as fast as you can go. But if you run a T5 in a CTF, you can actually miss some ports. So if you're really nervous about running any kind of scan, you can go ahead and run a T1 and they're not gonna notice that you're scanning their ports. This is going to really slow down your InMap scan. And then this dash V right here will tell you the open ports as it hits them. So this is gonna run a really slow scan on the top 100 ports and nobody's gonna notice. So you can go ahead and run this and it says that there are two ports and it's gonna pop down with the ports as it hits them. And so eventually you're gonna see port 80 pop up and I'm not really sure what other ports are open on this program, but this is how I would run an in-map scan. And so you can see right here, it tells us that it's scanning the top 100 ports. All right, so I decided to go ahead and add in this in-map network scanning legal issues page. So if you have any questions about using in-map legally on your specific targets and you're still worried about it, you can come and read this right here and it's gonna give you a kind of the legalities of using on different networks. I am not a lawyer, so I decided to go ahead and add this disclaimer in there that you are using this at your own risk and you should check with the laws in your specific state on port scanning. So this is how I would run an in-map scan if I'm running one on a bug bounty program. This is gonna be a really safe scan 
to run and it's going to tell you the information that you want from these specific ports which ports are open what versions are running on your target so you can go ahead and play around with nmap this is how i do it though and now i want to show you how to fuzz for directories in a safe manner and you may still end up getting rate limited which is fine especially if you have a vpn you can just switch your vpn so we're going to go ahead and run fuff now and this is the syntax for fuff i'm going to show you this with this common word list right here and then we'll go ahead and download sec list and you can see a better word list than what is default on the Kali machine. We can actually see what we have as options here and you will see that I'm using the FC to filter out specific codes that I don't want to see and I think I had a 402 on here, a 403, I don't want to see the 403s but you can leave those in if you want and then you can filter with other ways but we're looking for that dash p and it is right here and it's going to tell you how to delay your requests and you can slow them down by however much you want from anywhere from 0.1 seconds to two seconds in between requests okay so we have this request here and let's say we really want to take our fuzzing really slow you can run this with a two second delay or a one second delay in between requests um, we don't really need to filter out by the not founds and then we're going to run our word list and we're going to run the common word list the common word list dot txt so if you want to you can go ahead and run it just like this and you will have this word list so if we run this you can actually see right here the progress you can see the number of requests that are being sent and so it's sending 37 requests every second which is actually kind of a lot um, one of the things about Fuff is it is really fast. You can actually, we'll actually show you how fast this will run without slowing it down. And you can see right here, it's sending 680, around 600 requests per second. And that is really fast. You're definitely going to get yourself rate limited or, or picked up running requests that quickly. But Fuff is my go-to tool. I often tell people that you can run Derb just like this and you shouldn't find yourself in any trouble because Derb is pretty slow. But I like to use Fuff because of the options that are available with it. Now I want to go ahead and show you how to install Seclis. I'm actually going to come back here. I do have Seclis already installed, which will save us some time, but you can come out to Google, go to their GitHub page right here, and you can run a git clone. So we'll copy that right here. And you'll want to CD into your opt, and then you can type in a git clone right here just like this and you can see it's the last thing I actually installed on here this will take a little while to run and then you can CD into the sec list and you can start looking through all of the different word lists that they have in here so you have a fuzzing directory you have a discovery directory and I actually think the discovery has some pretty good word lists and then we can CD into the fuzzing because that's what we're doing and there is all of these different word lists for you to pick from when you're doing your fuzzing so this is how i would recommend scanning a bug bounty program if you are looking for specific ports to be open or you are checking for directories so good luck with your bug hunting thanks for watching